Oh yeah, I wanted to do one thing before we start playing. Let's see. Let's see if I can get it. Right, I'm gonna pause. I'm gonna pause the music actually. All right, let's take a look at this first. All right. Game of the year. Man, I've only played two of the games that are on here. Elden Ring and Stray. <laughs> you can't really uh, compare the two. St Stray was really good, but Elden Ring, I think I put the most time into. I, w I haven't played God of War. I played the first Plague Tales of... Or Plague Tale Requi Requiem. And I played a little bit of Horizon Forbidden West because it came with the PS5. I got... And Xenoblade Chronicles... Three. I've never played any of them. I'm probably going to vote for Elden Ring. Maybe my... Maybe uh, I should play God of War first. <laughs> well, I haven't even played the first one, so... Sign in. Alright, I gotta sign in first. There we go. Vote placed. Wait. How do I go to the next one? Next category. All right. Best game direction. I've only played Elden Ring and Stray. Probably Elden Ring. This is going to be a boring list because I've only played one of these games. Best narrative. Only played Elden Ring. The hell? Best art direction. Okay, this is a good one. Because I've played Scorn. Stray is really good, the art direction. Elden Ring is really good. Oh man, this one's tough. Scorn definitely had its own specific type of art style. That was really cool. The HR Geiger look. And it was very consistent throughout the entire game, but the game itself wasn't very good. Well, it was, it was good, but not as good as uh, Elden Ring. But I guess you can't really compare the gameplay when you're just doing the, the narrative. Um, Stray has a really good art style too. I think I might give it to Ar Stray. There we go. Best score. And music. Elden Ring was re Oh, nice. All right, I'm giving it to Metal Hellsinger. Hell yeah. Best audio design. I've only played Elden Ring. Jesus, it's, it's entirely Elden Ring. Best performance. Oh, no. I didn't, uh... I didn't play any of these games. Well, I'll, I'll probably give it to God of War. Definitely. Just seeing the, the the advertisements for this game. Incredible. This guy's always done a good job. I'll give it to him. Games for impact. Did we play any of these games? As Dusk Falls looks look pretty cool. I was gonna play Citizen Sleeper, but I never got around to it. I don't know. I'll give it to this one. Best ongoing. Genshin Impact. Fortnite. Apex Legends and Destiny 2. Who do I know that plays a lot of Destiny 2? Was it Jola? I don't know. I think I'll probably give it to Final Fantasy. Sure. And I, I just realized how many games I, I haven't played this year. Oh, here we go. Best Indie. Yeah, we played four of these. Cult of the Lamb, Sifu, Stray, and Tunic. All right. I didn't know these, all four of these games came out in the same year. Sifu. 
We played that really early on. Uh, damn. Cult of the Lamb. I had a lot of fun playing that with you guys. Naming all the cult members after you. Sifu, I didn't actually finish. Stray, I finished. And Tunic, I finished. Um, I really like Tunic's level design. The combat wasn't very good. It was functional. Stray. I really like this game. Hey, tomato. I'm just doing my, my steam, uh, or what do you call it? Game awards votes right now. Around best indie games. There's 31 ca categories. Are you kidding me? I'm only on nine. I think I might give it to Cult of the Lamb just because of how much we've played that game. I really enjoyed it playing with you guys, but it, I wouldn't say it's like um, innovative. Same with, well, Sifu, I think, is most innovative. Just the combat. Neon White, I never played. I heard of it, though. It was a first-person card battler game. Looks like anime. Tunic is really good. I finished that one. I didn't get the f secret ending that I wanted to go for, but I think I'm going to give it to Cult of the Lamb. Yeah. There we go. These are tough choices, yeah. Did you see the dragon flight for WoW? No, I didn't. I, I saw a trailer for it. What are you talking about then? The entire expansion or the actual flying the dragons? Because I, I saw the expansion. I'll give it to Diablo Immortal. The only game that I would probably play out of all of these. Those dragon characters are hard. <laughs> I knew you would probably like that. Tower of Fantasy, I've never heard of that. Marvel Snap. I think that's a card game. Genshin Impact. Wait, yeah, we played Genshin Impact this year. So I'll vote for that. I completely forgot about that. We only played it once. Best community support. What does that mean? Recognizing a game for outstanding community support, transparency, and responsiveness. Inclusive of social media activity and game updates and patches. Definitely give it to No Man's Sky. That game came out like five years ago and they're still updating it. It's a complete disaster when it first re released. Innovation in accessibility. What the hell is that? Destiny 2. <laughs> is that, does that game have bad community support? I, I've never played it. Software and hardware that is pushing the medium forward by adding features, technology, and content to help games be played by, and enjoyed by even a wider audience. I have no idea what that means. Oh, I think it's like accessibility options, like adding like difficulty options and Stuff like that. I remember Last of Us had a really good accessibility option. Like they made it so that you couldn't die, and you could you could play like one-handed if you wanted. So I think I'm gonna give it to Last of Us. Oh yeah, they had like a contrast mode where it would only show the enemies or all the all the stuff that you can pick up. That's actually pretty cool. I don't know why anybody would want to use that. But they have played Neon White, Imagine Ghost Runner, or Mirror's Edge parkour mixed with Lost and Random. I heard it was pretty good. 
I've seen a couple of videos on it. The game is a really bad place right now, and devs essentially aren't listening to much community feedback at all. Um, best a VR and AR game. I'll probably wait. I've never. I haven't played any VR games this year. But I've heard of Bone Lab. I heard this one's pretty good. Among Us VR is pretty, just Among Us, but in VR. Yeah, I'm going to give it to Bone Lab. I haven't heard of any. I've heard of After the Fall. It's like a first person little VR shooter. Ooh, Among Us. <laughs> I think you might be biased. Because you're a huge Among Us fan. After the fall, but I did Bone Lab, and Bone Lab was great. Alright. It's going to be one of these. Just a bit. I think I'm going to give it to Bone Lab, just because it's an indie company. You show them some love. Among Us doesn't need any, any love. They're already like the one of the most one of the most popular games at one point. Best action game. Oh, okay. The only one I've played is Sifu. CLZ CLZ is, isn't indie anymore. Oh the that company. Alright, I'm gonna give this to Sifu. It's the only one I played. And it's a fantastic action game too. I need to play more video games, guys. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess these are like the top. I, I don't play like all the best or, you know, like the most hyped games that come out all the time. So I'm playing Factorio's right now. That game came out like three, four years ago. Best action adventure. Uh, action adventure. <laughs> you can either choose a game with the main character as a cat or a fox. Which one? Uh, I might have. To, I might give it the tunic here. I think it has disadvantage of me because I haven't played it in probably six months. Stray was great, but I wouldn't say it's an action adventure. It's more of like a cat simulator. Tunic. Best role playing. All right, well, Elden Ring it is because that's the only one I played. I think my my list is probably gonna be not redundant, but I haven't played a lot of these games. Sifu is a, a fighting game, really? Well, yeah, it is, but I wouldn't put it in this category. DNF Duel, Multiverses. I heard Multiverse is pretty good. Sifu. There you go. Next category. We're on 18. Out of 31, guys. Best family game. Uh, I'm going to go with Lego Star Wars. It's the only one I played. But, no. I haven't played that. Best sim strategy. What genre would you put Sifu in? Probably an action adventure game. I wouldn't say it's a fighting game. Well, it, it is, there is fighting in it, but it's not competitive fighting like multiverses where it's, that's like the main goal. Like you fight against each other. I'm going to give it to Total War. I like Warhammer, even though I haven't played it in years. Best sport slash racing. I have 
No, I'm not giving it to FIFA or NBA. Hell no. They did wait they did way too much. Um There's too much microtransactions in them. Anti consumer. It's basically the same game over and over again. I'm never gonna vote for that. Glad like NFL and well NHL I think is a little bit different. I think they care more about different iterations. I'll give it to this one. Ollie Ollie World. Sports games are so boring. <laughs> I, I, me and my my buddy, we used to play FIFA all the time. But that was like FIFA 06 or something. No, and we used to play NHL all the time as well. Best multiplayer. Definitely gonna give it to Overwatch. Plus, it's the only one I've played consistently. Content creator of the year. Here we go. The only one I know is Ludwig. <laughs> Do you know any of these guys? Carl Jacobs. I only know Ludwig because I've seen a bunch of his um, TikToks and he does that one show. It's like a game show. My roommate watches it all the time. Nibillion. Nebellion, No Brew, QT Cinderella. She's the only female. Maybe I should vote for her because she's the only female. <laughs> what do you think? Uh, let's go with Ludwig. He's the only one I'm really familiar with. Best indie debut. Oh man, Tunic or Stray? I'm gonna have to give it to Stray. They had a huge impact on the on the gaming industry this year. I say Ludwig, yeah. Best uh, adaptation, recognizing out outstanding creative work that faithfully and authentically adapts a video game to another entertainment. Oh, that's cool. I'm gonna have to give it to Cyberpunk. I really like Cyberpunk. I Cuphead show was really good as well. I saw Uncharted. It wasn't very... It was alright. The last 15 minutes was really good, but it was very generic. How it started. I haven't seen Sonic or Arcane. Let's go with Cyberpunk. Most anticipated game, Starfield. Easy. It's easy. Sorry. Sorry. That one's too easy. Best esports. Um, let's give it to Counter Strike. Kind of wish Overwatch was on here. Best esports athlete. Valo. <laughs> I didn't watch any Valorant esports. I watched a little bit of CS. But that's why I chose it. Who's best esports athlete? Simple, he's really good. CS player, Faker, he's really good at Hello, League of Legends. He watched so much of Valorant. I'm gonna give it to Simple. Oh, what? Don't crash. Don't crash. Oh no, what happened? The website crash? I don't know what happened. Oh, here we go. What is going on? Like this, my entire, the Opera, the website, Opera GX isn't even working. I just downloaded this today. I had to re reinstall everything. I 
All right, calm down, game. All right, calm down. There we go. Look at that. Best esports team. FaZe Clan. I probably won't vote for that. Dark Zero. Call of Duty. LA Thieves. Again, there's no uh, Overwatch, so I don't really know. You think Loud is good? Gen... Gen... G? Let's go with Loud. Best esports coach. Uh, I, I'm kind of out of touch here. I don't know. None of these names look familiar. Blade. I'll go with Blade. Just because I like the way he's standing. His arms behind his back. Score is, has a nice suit. Same with Bizka. Best esports event. Evo is pretty hype. I remember watching that all the time, like the Street Fighter tournaments. I think I'm going to go with that, Evo. There we go. 31. How long did that take? 30 minutes. Nice. Right on the dot. 